Shalom, who praises to you. I want Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Hara, Kadash. Double orders unto the apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well. And Shalom to the whole full elect. It's Paya Allah. And it's another video um, uh, of edification, Lord willing. Uh, this video is going to be simply entitled Rooted. Okay, and really, um, this video is an um, inspiration from. I was watching a podcast, Joe Rogan, or something like that. And I came across this information, <clears throat> and it led me to do my little research, and I just formed a lesson of the, the strength of it. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a scripture, this is Ephesians 3 and 17, that Yahweh Shai may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Okay, and it goes on to read, etc., etc., but I'm going to hone in on this point, okay? Of the scripture, okay, that says um, that Yahweh Shai may dwell. You know what? Actually, um, I want to go to Colossians two and seven, and then we're gonna move from there. I'm gonna start from six. Colossians two and six. As ye have therefore received. Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Okay, now I'm going to go back to Ephesians, but I'm going to come finish up on Colossians. But um, I wanted to focus on this point because this, you know, this is, this, this is obviously a preset that works in cohesion with Colossians, all right. So Ephesians two and seven. Sorry, uh, Ephesians two and seventeen, and it reads, <coughs> "Salakia, um, three and 17 I'm getting confused. All right, that Yahweh Shai may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love." Okay, so basically the first thing it speaks of is, um, you know, it speaks about Yahweh Shai, but it says, it says, um, we can dwell in Yahweh Shai basically by faith. Now, what is faith? Faith is, you know, something that ain't seen. Okay, but before, I don't even want to get into what it is. How do you get faith? Okay. It tells you in Ephesians 2 and 8 that faith is a gift from the Most High, all right? And in order for you to really, the Lord to open that gift, for you, the way that you receive that gift is by way of, um, as it tells you in Romans 10, it tells you that um, faith is a, faith basically cometh by hearing, and by hearing the word of the Most High. So basically, you, you have to, how would you know at least you be taught, which it also says in that chapter, which basically, the Lord's men, and this is why the Lord's men are on the highways and byways, all right, so they can teach you, so you can hear, and you can you can gain that, that gift of faith, which it, it being open unto you, <coughs> you can then participate, all right? But the way, what allows you to participate in that gift is basically by hearing the word, okay? So that's how you really participate. So when you hear the word, then the Lord is able to sup with you. Okay, because basically that's it in a nutshell. It tells you in Re Revelations, when you read from 3 and 19 on down, it tells you about um, the Lord knocking on, on the door, which being your, your mind, you know, knocking on your door. And basically, you know, if you open to him, if the wisdom is with you to open unto him, I mean, if the Lord is dealing with you as to open unto him, then basically the Lord open the door and then he'll sup with you. And basically it will take root and build up in you, okay? So, you know, that's that's the point, okay? So how do you then, it says, um, that Yahweh Shai may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, okay? So when he takes root and it's grounded in you, what, what, it takes root, but the, the, what really grounds the root is the word, man, which is the love, okay? Because when you go to, which I'm going to read, you go to 
I'm going to go to 2 John 1 and 16. I mean, 2 John, yeah. Uh, one and six, sorry. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the com commandment that, as you've heard from the beginning, you shall walk in it. Going back to the book of Exodus, uh, Deuteronomy. Various scriptures within written in, I believe it's written a few times in the book of Deuteronomy. All right. In the book of the law, the Lord basically says the love of the most high basically is, is basically keeping of his commandments by keeping at his word. That's your showing of love. Okay. And that's really how the Lord again is going to take root and what's that? That's going to ground you. Okay. By, um, having a word of the most high rooted in you, okay? So I'll read this one more time and then I'll move on. That Yahweh may dwell in your hearts by faith, right? And you know what your heart is. Your heart is talking about your mind, okay? All right? That ye being rooted and grounded in love, all right? And it says, may be able to comprehend with all saints where is the breadth and length and depth and height, all right? Um, but the point being, is the rooting and the grounding, okay? Because let's remember. Basically, if you don't root yourself in a time of tribulation, as it tells you in the parable of the, um, the, the, you know, the seeds, I can't remember the name, but Matthew, the 13th chapter, talking about the various seeds where they fell, all right? Basically, one of they one of them didn't take root. I wasn't able to grow, and that basically was broken down as to be in tribulation. When tribulation comes, because he has no root, he's taken away by that tribulation. Now this brings me to the article that I found, and this is from um, Huffington Post or HuffPost.com, and the name of the article is called um, "Grow Deep and You'll Stand Tall." All right, so I'm going to read an excerpt from this article, which has some information, and then, you know, move on from there. There was a great experiment done in the early 1980s in a desert called the Biodome. It was an exercise to create the perfect living environment for human beings. See Esau and his wicked ass, as if the, the earth ain't built in righteousness in itself as to where that you need to now create a Biodome for, for perfection upon the earth. All right, that's Esau's wickedness, and and we're gonna see where his lack of understanding led in this situation. All right, it was an exercise to create the perfect living environment for for human beings, plant and animal life. A huge glass a huge glass dome was constructed, and an artificial controlled environment was created with purified air and water, filtered light, and so on offering the perfect growing conditions for trees, fruits, and vegetables, and humans. Now, Esau's wickedness, okay, Esau, Edom, the red Hebrew Edomite, what he doesn't understand is that the earth was made in this perfection and glory from the beginning. But because the, the, it tells you um, when the righteous and authority, the people mourn. If the people are mourning, the earth is mourning as well. And it also tells you that in Isaiah, okay, I can't remember the scripture off the top of the head, Isaiah 26, um, show favor unto the wicked, yeah, in the land of righteous, of righteous, will you not do righteousness, righteously, and, um, yeah, and then, um, also it talks about, in Isaiah 24, and 4, it says, the earth mourneth and fadeth away, the world languisheth and fadeth away, the haughty people of the earth do languish, the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. If not, he covereth the face of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Esau, Edom, the red Hebrew Edomite, the so-called white man as he's known today, okay? And all the descendants of the earth, they could be black Hebrew Edomites, but they're Edomites, okay? Um, earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance and broken the everlasting covenant. Changed the ordinance. What does that sound like? 
Mm, bio dome. So let's read on. Okay. So it says perfect growing conditions. And this is something as well. This this could even apply as a metaphor for Esau's living conditions in his kingdom. Because basically, going back into the book of Genesis, we had um, Tubal Cain. We had Cain about that anyone seek vengeance unto Cain, it shall be brought unto him sevenfold. And then when Tubal Cain, I believe, he did, he, he murdered as well. It was said, if it be unto Cain sevenfold, then unto me it shall be seventy and sevenfold. Okay, so Esau is rolling in that spirit today, all right, because um, these the spirit, the, the blessing of the sword is upon Esau. So if you attempt to fight against Esau, you're basically he's gonna get that vengeance upon you by way of his sword, okay, and um, that's why these, these people, this kingdom that he's made is basically a bubble now, a biodome where no one is tried, no one's tested, and no one is. Um, Basically, the reason why I mentioned the sevenfold, because you ain't brought, because you, um, judgment is not um, executed speedily, um, it's the heart of the people set to do wickedness, I believe, loosely paraphrasing. So they don't know that the return on their investment in wickedness is a bad ending, okay, which is going to be met soon. People lived in the biodome for many months at a time and it was wonderful because everything seemed to do well and one, with one exception. When the trees that were planted grew to be a certain height, they would simply topple over. It baffled scientists for the longest time until one day they realised that one natural element they for, the one natural element they forgot to recreate in the biodome, a perfect, a perfect, um, the perfect um, living conditions, they forgot one thing. All right, wind. Trees need wind to blow against them, which in turn causes their root system to grow deeper into the soil, which in turn supports the tree as it grows taller. Okay, and that's the one thing that the Lord has allowed us to benefit from this kingdom tribulation. Okay, which is that wind. Okay, it tells you that you, the Lord shall basically make up his jewels. All right. And it tells you that gold is tried in, in the furnace of affliction, all right? So it's as a purifying um, uh, a process, okay? So we're being made pure because at the end of the day, everyone's going to have to go through that purifying process, but they're not going to reap the same benefit. And that's known as the second death, okay? When two-thirds of the nation of Israel are going to be exterminated along with all the wicked nations of, the, of this world in the land of America where it's going to take place, Okay? But this tribulation that we go through and this truth basically allows us to do what our roots to grow deeper. And like the root that is taken through the, tribu the, the tribulations of this wind. Look, the first thing when you get in this truth, you find out, okay, I'm an Israelite. I'm of this tribe, so on and so forth. But then guess what? What does it say? It, it, it was sweet in the mouth, bitter in the belly. Because then that tribulation sets in of that we're in slavery. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. So that's the, the first set of tribulations. You delve in the truth. You overcome that. You become better rooted in the truth. And then it's only a process that keeps on going and going until we're out of here. We're on the road to perfection. We ain't going to be perfect in here. The time when we're going to be made perfect is in the time of the end when Yahweh Shai makes his return. Okay? Um, my battery's low, so I'm going to have to nip this in the bud, man. So, um... um So now um, I'm just going to read this being um, the scripture started with Colossians. Excuse me one second. Just bear with me. charging all right so reading on it says um oh let's grab the scripture colossians 2 and 7 all right all right colossians 2 and 6 as ye have therefore received yahweh shah masha the lord so walk ye in him so we've been our minds have been opened in this this faith the gift of faith we've been, it's been bestowed upon us 
<coughs> and we're grounded. Faith cometh by hearing. You being taught and learning the word of the Most High allows you to, to, to gain some grounding in this truth for your root to take place, to take, for, for you to take root in this truth and to grow. All right? So walk ye in him. Verse 7. Rooted and built up. Okay? So... Once we're rude, we'll be built. That that will be built. Will be built up, and that's why it says in this in the book of Corinthians, which I'm going to read. First uh, Corinthians three six. Okay, First Corinthians three and six. I have planted, Apollos watered, Apollo, Apollos watered, but the Most High gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planted anything. Neither he that watereth, but the Most High giveth the increase. So the Most High is ultimately, he has men in his faith that have woke, you know, they plant the seed of faith. And they have men that um, oversee you or brothers that you go to to gain more wisdom. They may take a liking to alongside the apostles and elders and the brothers within your camp. They water you, okay? And then basically... Um, but the Most High is the one that increases you. Because you can do that. But if you're not of the faith, if you're not of the elect, it don't matter. You ain't going to grow. Okay? <clears throat> now, he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So you get in what you put, in, put out, man. You reap what you sow. All right? For the laborers, well, that's the point. All right? So you got to put in the work. And that's that's how you you know through you basically get you form more grounding more rooting and grounding by learning more and more. But then you get your your, your experience from the experiment from the Most High man, where he basically provides that wind, okay, and you overcoming that tribulation that wind, you gain more rooting, okay. So I'm just gonna read this and and, and, and that's it, man. So Colossians 2 and 7, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. Okay? So you'll be established in the faith. Now, if, how you really, our faith was really going to be established when Yahweh Shai makes his return upon the earth. As you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So the most the more that we, we grow in this faith, we give thanks to the most high power, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Ha Rakar Kadash. For, for allowing us to grow further and further. And really, this is this is a daily, you know, we strive for this daily, man. All right? Being in the spirit. So with that, man, I pray you're edified. Shalom.